This is part two of the Toyota Kalahari Botswana 1000 Desert Race Leg 4 of the APSA Off-Road Championship, marking the halfway mark of the battle for the national crowns in the various classes. After a tough prologue of over 50 kilometers, where the starting order was determined, the following day was made up of the first day's racing proper, and after 480 kilometers of hard driving, 15% of the field dropped out due to the toughness of the first large loop through the Botswana bush. But yeah, last year we had an absolute disaster. It was, it was a nightmare. But uh, we learned a lot from that, and I think we fixed all that now. And uh, made a lot of improvements to the car. And I think I'm a year older in off-road racing, so I think uh, we've got a better chance this year. It's a very steep learning curve. Yeah, you know, I've been driving cars all my life, but off-road is a different game altogether. It's very, very tough. It's hard on the car, it's hard on the driver and the navigator. And uh, you've, got to, you've got to be fit, eh? You've got to have stamina to, to, to 1,000 Ks. And uh, you've got to pace yourself. I think that's an important thing. In the Ford camp, there were great expectations with one or two reservations and adjustments. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a whole lot different. Uh, these cars are uh, very efficient in the corners, and uh, if it's a tight, twisty race like it normally is, I think they'll be very good. And we're looking forward to it. We did some good testing on Sunday before the race, so we're looking forward to it. You know, getting used to the car more and more all the time. Made one or two adjustments that's really shooting my driving style a little bit better. And uh, we're looking forward to a good race. You know, it is a thousand kilometers, so you need to keep it going for it. So I think the winning times are normally like 17 or 18 hours. So, you know, it's, you've got to keep consistency more than anything. A good placing in the prologue meant a dust-free drive. Uh, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a hell of a long event. And, you know, we've, we've basically rebuilt our suspension on our backy both front and back. And, yeah, like you said, long event, uh, hoping to get a good place in the prologue. We always know that that's important. So, yeah, looking forward to it. But there was drama for Rundle in the Baden Tire Services Nissan, who couldn't complete the first day and had to call it a day. For Motorite, though, it's all about R&D. Um, we say we, had a, we ended up with a, the fair result at Sun City, but it wasn't what we expected. We did have a lot of uh, teething problems with the cars. Um, so we've done a lot of development and obviously put a lot of time into the cars, a lot of testing again. And theoretically, this time around, I think we've got it right. Um, any special preparation for a race like this one? Because no. It's different to nearly all the other races on the calendar. It's the same as all the other races. You know, we prep our cars as best as we possibly can. So it doesn't matter whether we're racing for 500 or 1,000 k's. We do the best possible job we can before we get to a race. And then um, the, the next race preparation will be at, on Saturday night. And once, once we get through to Saturday night, we'll do another race prep on the cars and preparing them for Sunday. But there was still a long way to go. The father and son combination Hugo and Jaap de Brain in their Mycarin XL dealer Toyota, who won the prologue in 39 minutes and 24 seconds, were up first and led a baby of production cars out of the starting stall. However, they'd only had 11 seconds to spare over defending champion Hannes Krobler and Francois Jordan in the fire engine red Nissan Navara. And the race was on. Toyota would have been feeling confident, though, as Mark Cronier and his co-driver Chris Birkin were themselves just a few seconds in arrears and were primed and ready to pounce. But equally loaded was the Nissan Navara of Duncan Foss and Stanley navigator Richard Leake. They were fourth and looking smooth. Mark Corbett and Rudy Balzar in their Century Properties Nissan Navara also went well in the SP class, making it three Nissans in the top five. And the big Nissan was sounding like it was ready for even more abuse. Ford's Brandon Harkis and Jean Moore have had three races to find their feet in the Ranger, and they had certainly done that right, and they had them firmly pressed against the floorboards. The big surprise package of day one was Carl Heinz Solwald, also known as Cully, and his son Quinton, who brought today's first special vehicle home in 7 hours and 27 minutes. 
Chris Fisser and Yapi Bagnost had a solid drive and were 12 minutes back in their Castrol Toyota, but were clearly trying the conservative way and saving the car for day two. Another father and son combination, Nick and Ryan Harper, were second in the special category. The Atlas Copco Bat was performing well and enjoying a lot of local support. Another surprise package was Colin Matthews and Alan Smith in the Century Properties Bat, who led the specials for more than 150 kilometres before they had a flat and had fallen back slightly. Motorites Hutchinson and his co Achim Bergman in their Bat Spec 3 were racing well, despite a whole host of small but irritating problems stretching from starter motors to seat belts. Bevan Bertolt and his trusty nav Robin Houghton were going well, even though it looked like they'd collected every bit of Botswana's fauna and flora. Total Motorsport Shamir Variaba and his co driver Siegfried Rousseau in their Porter had a fine first day, but were 10 minutes back. Clint Gibson and Mike Brown's absolute bat reached the line after 7 hours and 39 minutes. The Rapsa bat of Nardis Alberts and Colin Hunter was next across the line. 2005 Special Vehicle Champion Terence Marsh and his co-Peter Grunewald in the brand new racing colours of Regent Racing had also grown in stature since Sun City in Round 3. While Hermann Solwald and Paul Halberg in the second Solwald Transport Zarko were also right in the thick of things. Richard Schilling with his stand-in nav, Mick Oerstesen piloted the Plastotech Aceco to a very solid finish and the lead in Class S. Jan and Hendra Krey in the next Regent Racing Special were trying to not only finish their fourth straight race, but also to win Class B for the same amount of times. The brothers, David and Gary White in the Ruacon Bat, were also getting used to their new car and riding together. The third Regent Special was in the hands of Michael Whitehouse and Dean Langton, who impressed with a quick but controlled drive to finish in 7 hours and 53 minutes. The defending SP class champions Ford's Neil Woolridge and Kenny Schulthammer had a strangely out of sorts day and the Ranger pilots battled a bulky starter motor all the way. Their stablemate Kuvas van Tonner and Rian Guelpa in the next Ford were making their first appearance in the blue and white brand and were doing it proud. But the award for the worst looking car at the end of day one certainly went to Ivor Tollefson and his co-driver Quinn Evans, who had obviously connected quite a few solid objects in there by then unrecognizable Nissan Navara. But whatever the case may have been, the route was long and exacting and the dust had taken its toll. Even the production car drivers complained bitterly and they didn't have half the visual troubles that the special vehicles had experienced in the massive dust clouds that had built up further back. For Bez Besaidenote and Johan de Brain, it was, however, clear enough to be in contention for a podium in Class B. And in Class